Hello, and welcome to the 12th part of our Space Invader style video game, where we're going to be adding a boss alien. So right now we have our aliens that we're trying to fire along with our meteors to obtain points. And we have a timer that keeps track of how much time we've been playing, unless you have a countdown timer, which is also fine. I'm going to add a boss alien that moves back and forth up here and actually fires rockets at us that we need to avoid, which means we're also going to add some lives. So let's start with some variables for our boss alien. So I'm going to put a new comment up here in global called boss alien, and we'll probably add some variables as we go. First thing is we're just going to need an X and Y and a size and all that stuff. All right, so we're going to say B1X. And I'm going to start that right in the center of our screen and B1 for boss one. In theory, you could add more than one. Var B1Y. Let's put this at 100. So that's going to be above our first row of aliens. We're going to need a var B1 width, which I'm going to make the boss 100 pixels wide. Var B1 height. I'm going to make the boss, let's say, 30 pixels. Uh, tall and we're gonna need for now let's just give them a speed and a direction so that we can make them move back and forth and then we'll worry about actually how to defeat the boss and all that stuff in a moment so let's say speed of five var b direction speed of one okay so we're gonna use these speeds to actually make the boss move back and forth now instead of putting this in our game let's actually put this in its own separate function here so i'm just gonna go uh, below our game function and before our rockets function, let's just add a new function called boss. And then let's close that. All right. And the first thing we're going to do is we're just actually going to go ahead and draw our boss. And actually, you know what? Let's do an image. Instead of drawing a rectangle, let's go ahead and set an image for this as well. So let's make an image called or a variable called boss image. If you don't already have an image uploaded, let's go ahead and upload an image. I have an image uploaded from our multimedia tutorial earlier on. So I'm just going to scroll down to our preload function way at the bottom and say that boss image is equal to load image. And then I don't actually know what I called it. Let's check the files menu. Boss. That's pretty simple. So load image boss.png. All right, now let's go back to our boss function and let's just go ahead and draw our boss on the screen and then we'll make the boss move and then little by little we'll add complexity to it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna place an image, draw boss, image, oh geez, image, boss, image, comma B1X, comma B1Y, comma B width, comma B heights, all right, let's press, uh, I think I actually called it B1 width and B1 height. Let's, uh, we have to call this function in our game for this to work. So right below our meteors, I'm just gonna put boss alien and we can call the boss function. Let's press play. And there's our boss hanging out, ready to defeat us. Now let's make the boss move back and forth by itself. Okay, so let's just drop in some code, make boss move back and forth. Okay, now to do that, we have to set our boss in motion. So we're just talking left and right. So that's just the X variable. So B1X is gonna be equal to B1X plus B speed times B direction. And the reason that we're doing times B direction is that way we'll easily be able to change our direction to go back and forth. Right now, he's going to move just to the right because our B direction was set to being a positive number up in global. Now we need an if statement where if he hits either wall, he bounces. So if B1X is greater than or equal to the width, that's hit right wall, B direction equals B direction times negative one, which will make it change its direction, close greater than W. So this is gonna be change direction, okay? And let's just copy this if statement. 
if B1X is less than or equal to zero, that's hit left wall, B direction times B direction times, or B direction equals B direction times negative one, that stays the same, but this is now less than zero. So now we should bounce back and forth. Let's give that a try. Beautiful, all right. Let's make uh, the boss have a life now. So we have to be able to defeat the boss in some way. Okay, so that means we have to do a collision with the rocket. Collision with rocket. So if R1X is greater than or equal to B1X minus B1 width divided by two. And if you are confused with this, I strongly urge you to check out the, the collision tutorial. I think that was part four earlier on but R1X and then R1X is less than or greater, no, less than or equal to B1X plus B1 width divided by two. And, and R1Y is greater than or equal to B1Y minus B1 height divided by two. And then R1Y is less than or equal to B1 y plus b1 height divided by 2. Okay, so that means rocket hit boss. Okay, now we want to do a couple different things. If I don't want the boss to die on one hit. So with our with our aliens, one hit and they're out. Okay, I don't want that to happen. I want the boss to uh, be able to take a couple hits here. All right, so we're actually going to make another variable in a moment that's called boss life. So if the boss life is let's say greater than or equal to 10. So that means boss is still there, not, not dead yet. Okay, so that means that the boss still has life left them is greater than 10. Well, let's say score equals score plus one. Okay. Let's say, so that way you, uh, that's gain point, right? Because you hit the boss, good job. Then boss life is going to be boss life minus 10. So boss loses life every hit. Explosion dot play. Let's play our explosion sound from earlier. I think it's actually explosion sound dot play. All right. And then we have to return the rocket back to the player. So R1 position equals two. Return rockets to P1. Okay, close, hit. Else, which means the boss ran out of life. If you're out of life, well, here's what we gotta do. We need to make him stop moving. So that's B speed equals zero. So that's stop moving. We have to move them off the screen, so that's B1X or Y, doesn't matter, minus 1,000. Move off screen. And R1 position is equal to, uh, we need another, uh, yeah, R1 position is equal to two. So send rocket back to P1. All right, so close, else, no more boss and close collision with boss. All right, now if you press play, it's not gonna work because we have to make a variable called boss life real quick. So let's scroll all the way up to our boss here. Boss, boss, boss. And let's make a variable called boss life and set that equal to 100. So he has a life of 100, let's press play. And let's just see, this might take a while. Very tricky. All right, well, that was one hit. I did get a point. Two hits, I got a point. Three hits, four hits. Oops, oops. Boss is still alive here. I believe we only have one more hit, maybe.
Perfect. Looks like we didn't get a point at the end there. So let's actually add uh, a point when we hit the ball. So right here, B speed, whatever. We also have to say score equals score plus one. All right, that's great. So we get a point. Get points at the end. Uh, also explosion sound dot play. Okay. Now, as a player, I couldn't really tell where the boss's life was. So let's actually print the life right above the boss. Let's print his health. So right here where we drew our boss, let's add print health. Okay, so let's actually say text font is our body font. Let's say text size is 10. Let's say fill is red to match our boss. And let's say text boss life is going to be at B1X comma B1Y minus 20, which should put it right above the boss's head. So let's press play. There we go. So we have 100 that's following the boss around. Let's see if I can actually hit him and just see if we uh, lose some life here. Oop. Very tricky. 90. Look at that. Every time you hit the boss, he loses a little bit of life. I'm not going to make you guys watch this again. Great. 80. Perfect. All right. Next thing we need to do is let's actually change our max score because now to win, not only do you have to beat the aliens, you also have to beat the boss. So that means that in addition to getting 18 points to actually win, now you need another uh, 11 point, no, 10 more points. So that's going to be, your score has to be 28 to actually win, right? 10 points to actually defeat the boss. So now you need to get a max score of 28 points to win. And then the last thing is let's actually make the boss be able to fire rockets back at you because why not? So let's add some rockets variables here for our boss. We're going to kind of set this up to be the same as the rocket for our player, but obviously with some new variables. So instead of just saying R, I'm going to do BR for boss rocket. So that's var BR1X. Let's set that equal to B1X. And that's BR1 for boss rocket 1. Var BR1Y is equal to B1Y. So that way the rocket's going to start at the boss position. Var BR1 position. So just like before, this is to keep track of boss pos rocket positions. However, I think we're going to need less positions. I think we only need two positions for this. So to keep track of where the rocket is. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to make a, a rocket size or anything like that or rocket speed. I'm going to use the rocket size and speed from the player so that way the boss rockets are the same size and the same speed as the player. If you wanted to, you can make your own unique boss rocket speed and uh, boss rocket uh, sizing if you wanted. So let's scroll back down to our boss function here. We're going to make a new subsection called uh, just boss rockets boss rockets and let's just define our position so position one is equal to in motion after firing position two is equal to reset back to boss so the reason we only need two positions where when we made our player position we need three is because the player you actually had to initiate the firing you had to put the push the s key the boss rockets are just going to fire on a regular timer basis Okay, so we only need two positions because they're gonna, they're gonna fire automatically. So let's draw boss rocket. Okay, let's say, let's fill it red to match the boss. Let's draw a rectangle at BR1X comma BR1Y comma R width comma R height. I think we should be able to see the rocket at this point. Let's press play and see if we can see the square. It is. It's not moving yet, so that's okay. So now we're going to go ahead and set up the firing of the rocket. So firing boss rockets. So if BR1 position equals 1, so that's our firing position, well, BR1X is going to be BR1X, so that's going to be stop 
following the boss. Then br1y is going to be br1y minus, or I'm sorry, plus r speed. So that's rocket speed. Fire rocket down. Okay. Uh, we need to return when we exceed. So if we miss, if we don't hit anything, that means that we're going to go off the bottom. So that's going to be br1y is going to be greater than or equal to the height. So we've exceeded the window. Well, then br1 position is going to be equal to 2. Close exceed height. OK. Then we're going to close our firing function. And then else, this is if we're not firing. So that's. If we're firing, the rocket's going to move unless we've exceeded our window. Else, so we're not firing right now, well, then we want the rocket to be with our boss. So BR1Y is equal to B1Y. BR1X is equal to B1X. Close, else, not firing. OK. Then we actually need to send the rocket back on the, BR, uh, the BR1-2 command. OK, so this is send rocket back on number 2 command. If BR1 position equals, equals 2, BR1 y equals b1y, br1x equals b1x, br1 position equals 1. Reset to fire again. Close, reset, command. All right, let's see if that works. All right, we got a rocket. Looks like every time we exceed the window, the rocket resets and fires. But obviously, we have no collision. So here's what we're going to do now. We're going to make a collision that when the rocket hits the player, the player loses a life. And we're going to make a collision that the boss can actually make the meteor shrink as well. So that way, the player loses coverage. All right, let's do the meteors first, because that's going to be a lot of copying and pasting. Let's go ahead and scroll down to our meteor function here. So this is rocket collide with meteor. Let's change this to player rocket collide collision with meteors. OK, let's copy and paste all three of these. So all the way from meteor one to meteor three. And let's paste that to now boss rockets. And the R1 has to become BR1. And that's it. So BR1, BR1, BR1. BR1, BR1 position, BR1 position. That looks good. Nothing changes for the meteors. BR1, 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 and BR1. Great. And then BR1, BR1, BR1. Obviously, if you're curious to how we made these meteors, check the older video of actually creating the meteors. All right. I think that's going to work. And just for the sake of comments, I'm going to change where I said player to boss. You don't have to do that, but I'm going to do that real quick just to make the comments match what we're doing here, even though we copied and pasted. Let's press play and see if the boss can shrink our meteors. Looks like the meteor is shrinking. That's awesome. Obviously, we'd have to wait for him to hit, but that first one definitely shrunk on impact, which is great. So if the rocket aligns with the meteor again, the boss would shrink it again. Fantastic. Now we have to do a collision with the player. So let's actually make a variable called lives to keep track of our lives. Uh, so let's go all the way up to global to our counters. Let's make a new variable called lives. I'm going to put it underneath score. So of our lives and let's set that equal to three. Now you start with this many lives. OK. Let's scroll back down to our boss function here. Boss, boss, boss. All right. 
I think this is my uh, it's rockets. Here we go. Close boss. And now let's do rocket collision with player one. So if this is going to look very similar to our boss collision. So if br1x is greater than or equal to p1x minus p width divided by 2 and and br1y is greater than or equal to p1x uh, actually I'm sorry this is still br1x br1x is less than or equal to p1x plus p width divided by 2 and and now we're going to do y br1 y is greater than or equal to p1 y minus p height divided by 2 and and br1 y is less than or equal to p1 y plus p height divided by 2 that's uh, that means that boss rocket hit player well what happens we're gonna lose a life so lives equals lives minus one lose life okay uh, let's actually we're gonna add a sound effect here so let's say life lost dot play so we'll actually add a sound effect which we have to make the variable then let's actually set our player back to the center. So P1x is equal to width divided by two. Set player back to middle. So no matter where you are when you lost your life, you'll go back to the center, which should be behind a meteor. And then let's set our rocket to return to home. So BR1 position equals two. Send rocket home. Close collision with player now to test this out we got to do a couple things we actually have to print the lives on the screen and we have to make our life lost uh variable so let's start with the life lost variable real quick so let's just make a new variable called bar life lost let's scroll all the way down to preload and say that life lost equals load Sound. I already have a sound uploaded from our multimedia tutorial earlier on, and it's called life. So it's 8 bit underscore life dot m4a. All right. And now let's go to our game function to where we have our status bar. And we're actually going to go ahead and change right here. So this is where we have our status bar. And we're printing. A lot of things. We're already printing score and everything. I think I want to adjust the scores position so that way I can fit our lives and our score together. So let's actually make the score. We're going to move the score down. We're going to say that the score is now going to be at 45 and 45. And then I'm going to copy this whole score thing here. And we're going to print the lives above it. So now we're going to say lives is going to be at 25 and then lives at 25. So I'm just going to separate this so it's a little bit easier to read. So that's our lives. This is our score. And obviously, we already have our timer. OK, let's press play. Uh, BR1X is not defined, line 399, looks like I have a typo, let's go down to 399, that should be a capital X, try that again. Alright, so we are firing, we have three lives, and I was hit, our sound played, and we lost a life. Great. Zero lives, obviously we didn't lose. So now the last step is we actually have to make a lose function here. We already have a win function. I'm gonna steal our win function. So where is our win function? We're gonna grab this whole win function here. Let's copy that. And let's call this lose, lose, lose. Let's change the color. Instead of making it green, let's make it red. 
that's all fine. Instead of saying victory, we're gonna say game over. Instead of saying your time was, let's say you survived four. Is it we already printing the seconds from part 11, so it's gonna display how much time it took to die, not to win. Great. All right. Now in our draw, we're gonna add a third stage. So if stage equals equals three, we're gonna run our lose function. And then in our game, let's scroll down to our exiting stages. Let's steal this whole thing here. Instead of saying if score is greater than or equal to 28, it's now gonna be if lives is less than or equal to zero. Game time equals game time. Took to die. Okay, stage now equals three. And instead of saying win sound, let's make one more variable called lose sound, close, no lives. So you lost. All right, last thing, almost there. We're gonna make a variable called lose sound. So let's scroll all the way up here to global, variable called lose sound. I already have one uploaded. Let's scroll all the way down to preload. Lose sound is equal to load sound. And then let's grab my files here. What do we call it? 8-bit lose. 8-bit underscore lose.m4a. Let's give this a try here, guys. Press play. Let's lose. Let's catch some of these missiles. One life. Two lives. Three lives. We survive for nine seconds. Game over. Refresh to play again. That looks perfect. And there you go. You have your boss.